All right, sorry y'all. I'm. This is gonna be in two parts because my phone rang and messed up my iPad at some point and I'm not going to record that whole 10 minutes again because my son's gonna be up from his nap soon. So here we go again. <laughs> All right. This sucks because I realized like 10 more minutes into this that it wasn't recording anymore. All right, so little hiccup there. And my husband's looking through the window at me. <laughs> okay, very distracted. People keep walking through. I really apologize. My intention was to do this in my office and then my son went down for his nap. All right, I'm gonna start at the beginning of that fundamentalist part, okay? So the other danger of the religious path to spiritual fulfillment is fundamentalism. This is the opposite of individuation in that it requires a belief in a static once and for all truth, which is given by others by authorities external to the individual, rather than being an evolving truth dependent on the psyche of the individual searcher. So fundamentalism, there's only one truth. It's told to me by this other person and I just believe it and, and, of, and stop. Nevertheless, Young saw that for some people, the structure of the church was an adequate psychic container and he was content to end a therapy if the patient returned to or joined a religious community. I'm sure that there was some making sure that that person was still able to like make their own choices and have their own beliefs in that. He's been accused of being an elitist in saying that the path of individuation is not for everyone. But clinical experience suggests he was simply being realistic to wean someone away from total reliance on the judgments of others, from a reliance on a God who tells them what to do in every aspect of their life, from food to money to family to shows that they watch to sexual relationships. With the promise of salvation, if all rules are obeyed, such an undertaking is only possible if the person has sufficient ego strength to sustain themselves to comfort themselves if they break a rule and not fear eternal punishment, to create their own psychic structures outside the religious community. For some, this is simply not possible. And to attempt a more fulfilling spiritual path is likely to lead to severe breakdown of the present psychic structures with nothing to put in their place. This isn't a judgment call on anyone specifically, um, for some, being involved in a very dogmatic religion that helps structure their life is a safe space. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just trying to explain that within the context of Jung's ideas that individuation wasn't for everyone because some people simply maybe don't have the proper upbringing, proper is the wrong word, have not been placed in situations where they can make their own decisions like that. Okay, so what about individuation as a spiritual path? To some extent, we all follow the spiritual path of individuation, usually unconsciously. Jung explained it as this, quote, it means no more than that the acorn becomes an oak, the calf a cow, and the child an adult. So he's saying it's just a natural process. But it is in the conscious chosen following of the path of individuation that someone can then achieve true spiritual fulfillment. Make sense? I really wish we were able to talk about this one-on-one. Um, -on -one. I'm gonna create a forum for you guys to ask questions, uh, if something doesn't make sense. So write down questions as, as you have them because I, I don't want this to be like, all right, here's this information and then we don't have a, excuse me, place to talk about it at all. All right, so this next story is something else. Young himself separated from the church of his father, who was a minister, along with eight of his uncles also being ministers in a dramatic 
fashion when he was 12 years old. All right, this is a crazy story y'all, so just bear with me here. Um, he was entranced by the sight of radiant sunshine on the roof of the Basil Cathedral glittering, and at the thought of God sitting above it, quote, far away in the blue sky on a golden throne and, end quote, for, for two days, Young was unable through terror to complete his thought. All right, two days later, he then wrote, quote, I gathered all my courage as though I were about to leap forthwith into hellfire and let the thought come through. I saw before me the cathedral, the blue sky, God sits on his golden throne high above the world, and from under the throne, an enormous turd falls upon the sparkling new roof, shattered it, and breaks the walls of the cathedral asunder. End quote. Man, I really wish we could talk about this in, in real life, y'all. We could think of this as Young's natural adolescent development, the acorn becoming an oak, though with extreme violence. But although in his vision, Young destroyed the religious structure, the church and its hierarchy of his father, he left his father's God intact. Indeed, this God is doing the destructive deed himself. So there are like layers and layers of symbolism to that. So Young's experience in this cathedral vision led after many years of doubt and struggle and the loneliness of so of such like total like destruction of his belief in his family and cultural traditions to his knowing that he lived not quote in the Christian myth but his personal myth I understood that the self is the principle and archetype of orientation and meaning end quote this involved the internalization of his father's external God, or at least the realization that since God and the self are both unknowable, they could be the same and one a projection of the other. More often he refers to God as being a projection of the self. He goes into this a lot in answer to Job. Okay, so, Remember, as usual, I'm just trying to get you out of the normal thought processes here. Okay, so to call Christianity a myth took great courage. It was only when he found parallels to his own myth of individuation in medieval alchemical texts and in ancient Chinese writings that he could think he was not mad and that he could dare to write Aeon, like this major huge book, answered to book Job. Um, he did not add the de definition of self to the definitions of the end of psychological types published in 1921 until 1960. It seemed he feared the reaction. So we're talking about someone incredible thinker of his time, but because of his cultural religious upbringing, he couldn't even think to explain the whole God and self as projection, as projections of one another thing. Um, so, and he goes into this in great detail in answer to Job. And as I've stated before, I'm just trying to get you to look at religions in a different light. And as most of us were raised in Abrahamic traditions, um, that being able to look at the writings in the Bible in a different way, like Jung does in Answer to Job, just can bring another layer of perspective to things. So what I really want to make clear is that Jung found important symbolism in the Christian story. Even after his strange vision and his development of the concept of individuation, Jung continued to find in the Christian story vital, archetypal, living symbols of the individuation process. His papers on psychology and religion, the mass, the Catholic mass, the trinity, 
which we've been kind of talking a lot about over the last couple of weeks, uh, together with Aeon, that original book I was telling you about, and answer to Job, explore in detail the current relevance of much of the Christian story. And throughout his writings, he uses the concepts of God, Mary, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and Satan, and makes reference to the great theme, great themes of Christianity, such as sin, judgment, forgiveness, redemption, death, resurrection, and evil, to il illustrate his psychological arguments. In a lengthy correspondence with Victor White, a Dominican monk, he argued tenaciously for the existence of evil in its own right, and not just as the absence of good. Remember, he was living through the Second World War. He saw the effect of Nazism in Vienna on Freud and his circle. And then after 1945 and the bombing of Hiroshima, was living in the nuclear age. Young was just a straight up realist. He understood the relevance of the Christian story and its ever living symbolic power and truth. He thought of the life and death of Christ as happening now, always, in a dimension to our ordinary life which might be thought of as eternal life or the objective psyche, a dimension in which time and the split between our conscious and unconscious awareness of events do not exist. Quote, as a window or a door had been opened upon that which lies beyond space and time. So kind of cosmic, kind of out there, this belief that the Christ story was and is always happening. Um, transformation symbolism uh, is where that quote came from. Um, so the self, this is really heady stuff, okay, ready? So the self-sacrifice of Jesus in his death is eternally present in this timeless dimension of our lives and so is always powerfully available as a symbol with immediate and current relevance. The death of the ego and the re resurrection of a new I, which no one recognizes at first. So he's believing in the, the resurrection story as being the symbolic, um, ever-present archetypal pattern we can tap into. And this resurrection of a new I, a new self, is mirrored in the Christ story because remember, no one recognized Christ at first after the resurrection. Um, none of his his own disciples immediately recognized the risen Christ. This kind of death may seem at first to be a failure, and then the resurrection may feel like a new hope and a new way of life the ending of all familiar security, and then the coming after a descent into hell slash despair of something recognizably the same yet amazingly new and different. We have all had such experiences on a smaller or larger scale, and Jung saw the story of Christ's death and resurrection as symbolizing this common yet often traumatic experience. Hope that made sense. So Jung himself saw the Christ story, the Christ resurrection story, as a way for us to recognize and understand when something of psychological significance has happened to ourselves. Similarly, every phase in Jesus' life and each of the parables can be understood as symbols of our psychic development. Edinger, an American Jungian analyst, has expounded so, some of these in his book, The Christian Archetype, such as the way the story of Herod, so terrified at the threat to his reign um, that there was a birth of a new king, that he kills all the baby boys, under two, symbolizes the terror, terror of the ego at the birth, the beginning of something, of a new movement in the psyche, which threatens the supremacy of the ego as it now is, and which can lead to a violent repression of new hope or a new way of life, a refusal to hold a conversation with new possibilities. So even that idea, that story 
about Herod, which we've had discussions around probably not being an actual historical fact, um, is in itself a symbol of when the ego realizes that there's something new invading, so some new belief system, maybe you could even look at this lecture, like if it bubbles up in your head and there's just like this, like, no way, man, that can't be true. That's the symbol of Herod. Like, wow. Um, Edinger's book makes explicit more of the Christian symbolism in ways which it seems Jung would have approved. So in 1946, Jung wrote, quote, There, the Christian churches, truth may, with more right than we realize, call itself eternal. But its temporal garment must pay tribute to the evanescence of all earthly things and should take account of psychic changes. Eternal truths need a human language which alters with the spirit of the times. The primordial images, the archetypes themselves, undergo ceaseless transformation and yet remain ever the same, but only in new form can they be understood anew. Always they require a new interpretation if, as each formulation becomes obsolete, they are not to lose their spellbinding power. What is that about new wine and old bottles? It's a phrase. So, end quote. So, what he's saying here is <sighs> there is a deep underlying eternal truth in what Christian doctrine says. However, that in order for things to remain relevant as we as humans change, those archetypal images also must shift to mirror what's happening in our modern lives. Jung saw that following the spiritual path of individuation, we are all now, quote, no more than the, the stable in which the Lord is born, unquote. And he hoped that more people would consciously choose this path and that this would bring about a quote, Christification of many. So that's something interesting. Like, I, I feel like Jung fought against his own upbringing at every turn. Um, he didn't want to say that the church should go away or the Christianity should go away. He was just saying that we needed to look at it in a, in a fresh perspective. For Jung, it is the internal life of the psyche, not external events, which are of paramount importance. We may think this is too one-sided and that our external life has its own equal importance, but for Jung, the external forms of religion are one means to follow our true spiritual path, which he saw as individuation. And in this quest, all external events can be understood symbolically. Um, so for more information about the religious function of the psyche, this, the concepts of evil that Jung uh, brought to bear, um, and just some, just an amazing thing, I'm going to include in our Moodle a link to just this absolutely astounding lecture by one of my doctoral professors. He's, his name is Lionel Corbett, and um, he's just freaking like amazing. He's just one of the smartest men I know. So I'm going to include that in our link. Um, and yeah, I can't ask you if you have any questions for me to answer right now because I'm recording this on a Saturday and you're going to be responding to this on a Tuesday. So please write down your questions. Please put them in the forum. Uh, there's going to be directions on how Tuesday and Thursday are going to work. Um, yeah, so this may be the last time you see me this semester, uh, as we only have one more class after this, and that is going to be, um, I'm going to create a couple questions for you to choose from regarding the answer to Joe. We'll have another discussion uh, in our online forum, but 
hope you are all safe and well, and I look forward to seeing you on campus next school year. All right.